If you only take one thing away from this video, I want to be sure that I make this very, very clear. You should go to Beijing regardless of the pollution problem. Good morning, Fearless Fam, and welcome back to another controversial China video. Today's video is all about my experience with the pollution in Beijing. So the pollution in Beijing was definitely something that I was completely aware of before I got to China. However, I assumed from the get-go, based on everything I know about media, that it was a sensationalized topic. My goal of this video is not to further sensationalize the pollution problem in Beijing. My goal is to share first my experience, secondly how I coped with it, and lastly a quick rundown of why the pollution problem exists and what I see in the future for China's pollution problem because I am an authority on pollution that's not true at all. I'm not an expert in this topic. I simply lived in Beijing for several months and experienced it myself. So in case you're new to my channel, I actually lived in China for most of 2016. My husband and I lived in Nanjing from February through July, and then we moved to Beijing in August and lived there until about, well, I was there until November. He stayed an extra month. When we got to Nanjing, it was beautiful. Blue skies, super pretty. It was cold. It was very cold because we got there in February. But for the first couple days in Nanjing, we really didn't see any kind of pollution problem. And from my understanding at the time, it was told to me that Nanjing's pollution problem is nowhere near on the same scale as Beijing. And then there was this one day that I remember very clearly our first week in Nanjing. We like walked outside of our hotel and it smelled funny outside and things looked really hazy. My throat felt kind of weird and I'm like, is this pollution? And it was, that was pollution. So that was my first taste of the pollution problem in China. Throughout the rest of my time in Nanjing, so I was there all the way and through July, I honestly didn't experience much pollution at all. So in August, we got to Beijing and what I had heard about Beijing before I got there was that, oh my God, the pollution problem is horrible. You're gonna cough up black gunk. You're gonna sneeze black gunk into a tissue. You're gonna have black gunk in your ears. I do have allergies, but I don't have asthma. I was warned that the pollution in Beijing can be kind of brutal for people with respiratory problems. So when we arrived in Beijing in August, it was like hot as hell, super humid outside, random rainstorms, but for the most part the weather was really, really pretty and I did not experience too much pollution when we first got to Beijing. Then we started having consecutive days in Beijing where there had really been no wind or rain or any kind of like inclement weather and this is like the prime time for pollution. So it actually did get to a point in Beijing where the pollution was visible on a regular basis. So the way that I would tell if there was, if it was like a bad pollution day is I would look outside and most of the time it was not a terrible pollution day. I am not trying to say that Beijing is polluted all the time. It is not. If you ever read or listened to the audiobook of J. Martin Truth's book Lost on Planet China, I can assure you that his description of the Beijing pollution is either sensationalized or that's really what it used to look like and the problem is improving because the things that he describes being in like this like thick blanket almost of pollution. I really didn't get that when I was there. So basically what I experienced was I would look out my window in the mornings and there was, uh, you know, all these really tall buildings in the distance. And there's like the closest one, the next, and the next, and next, and next. It was pretty common for the building that was super far away to be difficult to see. On the really bad pollution days, I actually could hardly see the building that was closest to us. Basically the way that you can tell right off the bat if it's a bad pollution day and the Way that I was able to tell is just by looking outside if it looks like really thick fog. And as I was checking the weather in Beijing, trying to figure out, you know, how to plan my adventures around the city, I'm trying to avoid really bad pollution days. Anytime I saw the words haze or fog, I automatically assumed it was pollution. And most of the time that was correct. So later on in our time in Beijing, once we hit like October, that's when I noticed when the weather was cooling down and there was less rain and even less wind than before, we had some really, really bad pollution days. So by this time I had downloaded an app on my phone that gave me the AQI, which is the Air Quality Index, and it's basically a number that shows you on a scale how bad the pollution is. And it gives you a little recommendation. On a really good day, it would say, it's beautiful, go outside. On a moderate day, it'd say, you might wanna limit your outdoor activities today. And then on a terrible day, it says, whatever you do, try to avoid going outside, please turn on your 
air conditioner and try to not leave your house. So I saw a range of days as I was in Beijing. I did end up buying some, a couple packs of those masks. So there's the cloth masks, like the cute fashion cloth masks. Some of them have like these refillable filters and stuff. From what I hear, those masks don't really do much. Then a step up from that is the, it's like kind of between a cloth and a paper, um, but it's like the kind of surgical masks that you would think of. And then they have this little plastic piece on them. I'll see if I can dig up some footage from China of me wearing one so you can see it. Um, but it has this little plastic piece with the filter on it. And those ones fit really snug to your face. And it has this little metal thing that you adjust for the nose. So you can actually feel it hugging all along here. What I realized after wearing masks for a while is that your breathing makes that mask crazy hot inside. So I noticed that when I was breathing, the mask would go like in and out, which is good because that means the air was going in and out of the filter only. But the hot air in the mask was like torture on my face face. Imagine sweating right here and nowhere else on your body. It was very odd. I hated the feeling and my skin even started to get a little bit irritated from it too. For people who did actually have respiratory problems, they do have some really hardcore masks. They can get crazy expensive. I saw a list of the top five masks or whatever in this like Beijing magazine and they were anywhere from like $40 up to like $200. So you can definitely tell the people who have respiratory problems or maybe it's just people who are very health conscious because there's some people in Beijing, they're pretty much all expats, but they wear these huge masks. And some of them look almost like a gas mask. They're like really fancy looking. They look almost like a custom thing that you've never really seen before. The masks in Beijing definitely range from like fashion to health and everything in between. You can get really expensive if you want fashion and health together, or there's like the really cheap options that are like ugly and they don't work very well. So it just depends on what you're looking for. When we first got to Beijing, I was exercising pretty much every day. Then when we got into the really bad pollution times, I remember there was a point when there was like four or five solid days of really, really low air quality numbers on my app and my app was saying, stay inside, don't leave, don't exercise, turn on your air conditioner, whatever you do, shelter yourself. Like it was really dramatic, but it was like clearly polluted outside, like really gross looking, it smelled bad. When you breathe in, you feel like these particles in your throat. I don't know if it's just me, but I definitely felt that over time in China, I had this almost like buildup in my throat of just like gunk. I think that really got worse when the mask started irritating my skin and I stopped wearing them out in the pollution. So basically what I would do is I would kind of plan my adventuring days around the pollution, unfortunately. Sometimes I would go out in it anyways, but most of the time I would keep my outdoor activities very, very limited on bad pollution days. And then also Eric and I had a few things that we wanted to do together. And so we had a list of like outdoor activities, a list of indoor activities, and on the bad pollution days, we did the indoor activities. Basically the Pollution in Beijing just became part of my life and it was completely normal to me by the end of it. It's just something you deal with when you're living in Beijing. I just tried to be aware of whatever was going on with the pollution. I guess the basic way I would describe pollution and being in the pollution in Beijing is like you walk outside, the first thing is that your visibility feels off. I'm looking at a tree in my backyard right now and I know that if it was really polluted outside, that tree would appear just a little bit hazy even though it's not very far away. And that's because there's a lot of particles in the air. Second thing would be breathing issues. So I don't have any kind of respiratory illness, but I do clearly remember going out in the pollution in Beijing and not wearing a mask because I just, it was irritating my face and it was like worse than the pollution itself. I would breathe in and I felt like my breath was like carrying particles into my throat and it would feel gunky, like a lot more coughing than normal. There's like the Beijing cough. I don't know if that's a real thing. I'm not like quoting anybody. I'm just putting it in air quotes because Eric and I would joke about it. Like we would have like the Beijing cough. There's like this particular cough that just sounds gunky that pretty much everybody in Beijing has. As far as coping with the pollution in Beijing, I've mentioned a few of the things already. So one of them was that I downloaded an app. I think it was called Breezometer. I would also wear the masks like I've been saying um, and I'll put a link down to those on Amazon. If you are headed to Beijing though, to be honest, I would just buy it when you get there. But if you're like me and you're a freak and you want to be prepared because you're all, and they're all going to be sold out of all the face masks, you just think of like worst case scenario. Thanks anxiety. I will put a link down below to some masks that are not 
like the worst masks, but not like expensive either. The last thing I did to cope with the pollution in Beijing was I stopped exercising outside. There was this turning point when it got to like fall time in Beijing where the pollution was so bad and I didn't want to mess up my exercise like routine. And I was just feeling crappy when I went outside. Like it was, it was harder to do things. My throat felt funny. So I started staying inside for exercising. I still biked around Beijing, but I would wear a mask when I would go biking. And then for exercise, I would go uh, on this YouTube channel and do these like dance routines. I'll put a link to him down below. It was, he was definitely one of my like Beijing pollution coping mechanisms. So last things I wanted to say about my experience in Beijing was just regarding some of the ways that the pollution is actually kind of incorporated now into Beijing culture. People joke about it a lot. When you have to deal with something that sucks on a pretty much daily basis, you just start to have a good sense of humor towards it. And I know that can seem like really wrong. If you are an environmentalist of any kind, um, I would consider myself an environmentalist, so it would get like a little depressing sometimes, but you know, well, you just deal with stuff over time, you know? I also noticed that at this really popular brewery in Beijing called Great Leap Brewing, they actually sold branded face masks. So that's actually a thing in China. You know, when a company wants to put their brand or like logo on a bunch of different products that they're gonna hand out for free, it's usually like some kind of like fan, a frisbee, or I don't know, post-it notes, pens, promotional materials. Um, yeah, putting your logo and your uh, brand name on face masks is a thing in China. And lastly, Erica and I realized something that we started joking about at first and then we realized it was a very real thing. And this is totally exaggerated, but the joke was that there are two kinds of people in Beijing. There are the people who, when it's polluted outside, put on a face mask and try to limit their outdoor activity. And then there's the people who stand outside all day with no face mask on, regardless of whether or not there's pollution, smoking cigarettes. It started as a joke, but it's like a thing. If you think that as you're going around Beijing, you're like, wow, okay, 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 okay. Because there were like all these really elderly, like super slow moving, missing teeth kind of elderly people in our neighborhood. And they had super like weathered skin and terrible coughs. And they would just be like chain smoking cigarettes all day, never wearing a mask. And they just sat outside in the pollution. I didn't really understand, to be honest. So if you are unfamiliar with the pollution problem in Beijing, which I'd be a little surprised if you were, because I feel like every single freaking country talks about how China has the worst pollution because it distracts, you know, their citizens from their own pollution problems, like here in the US. So that's another topic for another time. Basically, the majority of the reason for China's bad pollution problem is a coal dependence issue. China historically and currently gets a lot of their energy from coal production. And unfortunately, coal is a really, really harsh substance to put out into your environment. So China's coal dependency problem is one of the major, major causes for why there is such bad air quality, especially in Beijing. So Beijing in particular is a very polluted city. I know it's not the most, but it's high up on the list for sure. Basically anywhere where there's a lot of industry going on or coal mining going on, that's where the pollution is going to be really, really bad. However, China is improving. I know it's hard to look at pictures of the pollution in Beijing and think that China is improving, but from my understanding, th from things I've seen, really does sound like China is making a lot of steps towards ridding themselves of their pollution problem. Because the pollution is not just a problem for foreigners coming to visit China. They're seeing a huge increase in lung problems and just general health problems with their citizens. And that's an issue. You know, your goal as a country is to help your people, protect your people, be the mother of your people. And I think China is really, really trying to combat the problem. There's a lot of ways they're doing that. The most interesting way they're doing that actually, in my opinion, is the Green Wall of China. If you've never heard of this, you should definitely follow the link that I put down below to the Wikipedia article, it is super interesting. Basically what they're doing, like the short way to describe it is they are building a wall of trees. I know, China and their freaking walls, but they're basically building this like blockade of trees in an effort to stop the desertification problem that's happening in Beijing and being sped up due to climate change. I believe China is also getting a lot of pressure from a lot of other countries to tackle their environmental regulations for corporations. There's a lot that's changing and happening in China right now. I know for 
from my parents who grew up in the LA area that pollution used to be a big problem in the US. We were coal dependent, we had really loose environmental regulations. And then once that stuff got cracked down on, it didn't disappear. There's still smog in big cities around the US and smog is just another word for pollution. But when my parents were growing up in Anaheim, they told me that there were actually times in school where the pollution would be so bad outside that they wouldn't let kids go outside for recess or do any kind of outdoor PE activities and they would have to do all their breaks indoors because exercising outside in pollution is really, really bad for you. And it's especially bad for kids or for older people. LA has definitely had severe pollution problems as have many other US cities, I'm sure. That's just the story that I heard of growing up is from my parents. And it's gotten a lot better. So for me, I look at these cities in the US that have had a really bad problem and corrected the problem, not completely, but at least partially. And I see Beijing going that same route. If you only take one thing away from this video though, I want to be sure that you know that you should go to Beijing regardless of the pollution problem. Beijing is amazing. It's it's an ancient city. It has incredible history, super rich culture, a lot going on. It's a really cool example of what it is like to be in China. Obviously, China's huge. It varies from coast to coast, north to south, east to west. Everything China is very diverse. Beijing though is a very Chinese city in my personal opinion. I think Beijing is awesome and you should go whether or not you're scared of the pollution. If it gets worse a year from now and I end up there during some really bad pollution days, I would still be excited to be in Beijing because Beijing is awesome. If you felt like there's anything missing from this video or if you have any questions for me, please feel free to leave that down below. And before you go today, be sure to check out my China travel guide. I have been answering all the frequently asked questions that I get about China and I'm putting them in video form and I'm adding them to this huge playlist that I've got going. So be sure to go check that out. I have that linked above right now. Ooh, am I touching it? And I will see you tomorrow with a very fun video. Okay, bye. Bye.